He is known for his influential work on Chinese philosophy and its history. He is recognized for his contributions in reigniting interest in Chinese thought. His name is Feng Yulan. In the small town of Tangha County, Nanyang, Hunan, China, a middle-class family welcomed a bright and curious child named Feng Yulan on December 4, 1895. Little did they know that this young boy would grow up to become one of China's most influential philosophers. Feng's thirst for knowledge led him to study philosophy at the China Public School in Shanghai, where he delved into both Chinese and Western philosophical traditions. After completing his preparatory studies, Feng pursued higher education at Tsinghua University and later at Peking University. It was during this time that he had the opportunity to explore Western philosophy and logic, broadening his understanding of the world. In 1918, armed with his newfound knowledge, Feng set off on a life-changing journey to the United States to further his studies at Columbia University on the prestigious Boxer Indemnity Scholarship Program. At Columbia, Feng encountered a multitude of influential philosophers, but it was John Dewey, the pragmatist, who would leave an indelible mark on his intellectual journey. Under Dewey's guidance, Feng embarked on his doctoral research, culminating in his groundbreaking thesis titled A Comparative Study of Life Ideals. This work would lay the foundation for his future contributions to the field of philosophy. Returning to China, Feng dedicated himself to academia and became a prominent figure in the country's philosophical landscape. He held teaching positions at various universities, including Jinan University, Yenching University, and Tsinghua University, where he eventually became the chair of the Department of Philosophy. It was during his tenure at Tsinghua that Feng published his magnum opus, History of Chinese Philosophy. This seminal work not only presented a comprehensive examination of Chinese philosophical traditions but also incorporated Western philosophical influences, sparking a renewed interest in Chinese thought. However, Feng's journey was not without its trials and tribulations. In 1935, while en route to a conference in Prague, he made a brief stop in the Soviet Union. Inspired by the radical social changes and cultural ferment he witnessed, Feng delivered speeches praising the possibilities of communism, albeit acknowledging its flaws. These speeches caught the attention of Chiang Kai-shek's police, leading to his arrest and a brief imprisonment. Nonetheless, Feng's unwavering support for the government and its resistance against Japan emerged, and he continued to publish works that advocated for the revitalization of Confucian values through the New Life Movement during the Sino-Japanese War. In 1939, Feng released Xian Lishue, profound exploration of metaphysical notions drawn from 12th-century Neo-Confucianists and Taoism. By analyzing and developing these concepts through the lens of Western philosophy, Feng crafted a rationalistic Neo-Confucian metaphysics. He also delved into the nature of morality and the structure of human moral development, further solidifying his reputation as a profound thinker and philosopher. Feng Yulan's legacy continues to resonate through generations, inspiring countless scholars and learners. His relentless pursuit of knowledge, his ability to bridge Eastern and Western philosophical traditions, and his dedication to revitalizing Chinese thought have left an indelible mark on the intellectual landscape of China. Feng's contributions have not only deepened our understanding of philosophy but have also fostered a greater appreciation for the interconnectedness of diverse philosophical traditions. Feng's life seemed to follow a pattern of upheaval and uncertainty, much like the chaotic times he lived in. As the Second Sino-Japanese War erupted, Feng, along with the students and staff of Beijing's Tsinghua and Peking universities, found themselves forced to flee their campuses. They sought refuge first in Hengshan, where they established the Changsha Temporary University, and later in Kunming, where they formed the Southwest Associated University. In 1946, when the three universities finally returned to Beijing, Feng made a different choice. Instead of going back, he embarked on a journey to the United States, accepting a position as a visiting professor at the University of Pennsylvania. The year 1948-1949 saw him continue his academic endeavors as a visiting professor at the University of Hawaii. However, destiny had other plans for him. News from China reached Feng during his time in the United States, signaling the imminent rise of the Communist Party. Despite the pleas of his friends to stay, Feng felt an unwavering determination to return to China. His socialist leanings led him to believe in the potential of a new government. However, upon his return, Feng encountered a political landscape that fell short of his optimistic expectations. Feng's philosophical approach, which had once been celebrated, came under attack by the authorities in the mid-1950s. He was forced to renounce much of his earlier work and rewrite the rest to conform to the ideas of the Cultural Revolution. It was a period of immense struggle and hardship for Feng, as he had to navigate the shifting tides of ideological conformity. Despite the challenges he faced, Feng remained steadfast in his commitment to China and refused to leave. Eventually, he witnessed a slight relaxation of censorship, allowing him to write with a degree of freedom. 
Feng's resilience and unwavering dedication to his homeland were a testament to his enduring spirit. My life will recur in exactly identical fashion, Feng once said, reflecting on the cyclical nature of his experiences. His journey through war, exile, and ideological persecution not only shaped his own life but also provided valuable insights for us today. Feng's story reminds us of the importance of resilience, adaptability, and unwavering commitment in the face of adversity. It teaches us that even in the most tumultuous times, there is always hope for a brighter future. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.